friends, so what you wanna talk about? BTS, LeBron James? How about the latest release on Fortnite? Or the best TikTok trends? We all have our favorite things we like to talk about. In fact, I asked some of my friends what their favorite things were to talk about. Let's check out what they said. My favorite thing to talk about is all the things you can cook with an air fryer. I mean, you can cook Brussels sprouts, potatoes, brownies, cinnamon rolls. Ow. Ethiopia, for sure. It's my favorite place to travel. I love the culture. I love the food, the Shirawat. It's just absolutely stunning, and I love telling people about it. Sweet potatoes, roasted potatoes, mashed potatoes. I have to say, and some of you are gonna hate me for this, but it's CrossFit and fitness. My favorite thing to talk about is food, obviously. But when I come up with a new recipe, like like spaghetti with Doritos sprinkled on top, I have to tell everybody about it, right? Steak, chicken tenders, uh, chicken nuggets. My favorite thing to talk about, well, because I'm a gamer, uh, would be video games, specifically Madden. I'll talk to you all day about Madden. Pizza, Oreos, cereal. Have you tried cereal? Don't ask me, just try it. We each have things we love to talk about. And for most of you, talking about your favorite thing is a habit. It's a routine behavior you tend to do a lot. It's something you do every day. I know when I was in middle school, one thing that I loved to talk about was High School Musical. If you don't know what High School Musical is, it was a series of three movies that were super, super popular when I was in middle school. Me and my friends were obsessed with learning all the songs and dances. We talked about it all the time. Even though we all have different things we like to talk about, I think the reason we talk so much about them is the same for all of us. We want other people to experience what we love. Whether it's a movie we saw, a place we visited, or a sport we play, we love talking about the things we've personally experienced in a positive way. And I think that's because we want other people to experience those things in the same way. We love basketball, and so we talk a lot about it to our siblings because we want them to love it too. We're really into makeup tutorials on YouTube, so we talk to our friends about them because we want them to watch the videos with us. We love collecting sneakers, so we talk to our parents about the latest designs so they'll be interested in them too, and hopefully buy us a pair for Christmas. Talking about the stuff we're really into, the stuff we really love, the stuff we want other people to experience in the same way we do, that's easy to make a habit in our lives. And can I let you in on a little secret? Talking about God can actually be like this. Regularly sharing about God with others can be part of our everyday faith. Now, I know we're all here at church together for a lot of different reasons. Some of us are here because we have to be. Some of us are here to try it out. And some of us are here because we really like coming and learning about God each week. Well, I'd say that no matter why we're here week after week, talking about God could be a helpful habit to develop. Why? Because the more we talk about God, the more we'll know Him. And the more we know Him, the more we'll want other people to know Him too. We'll want them to experience what we've experienced. But for many of us, the idea of talking about God or our faith can feel scary. Maybe we're afraid to talk about God because we don't really know how to explain what we think. We're not exactly sure where to start or how to answer questions people might ask. We don't feel like we know enough big words or Bible verses or points about Christianity to even start. We talk about God, but we're we're not even sure what words we should use. Or maybe we're afraid it will be awkward and nobody likes being stuck in an awkward moment, right? That's why a lot of us don't even talk about our faith. We're afraid it might make other people feel uncomfortable or even offended. Maybe we're curious about what it means to follow Jesus, but we're not sure how to bring it up. And honestly, we're afraid that even asking somebody will make it weird. Or it could be we're not sure what we think. Even if we believe in God or think we understand Him, we're not positive we have it all figured out. And we don't want to look like we don't know what we're talking about. So often, we treat God like a math problem. We think we have to have all the details in order to get the right answer. And until we have all those details, we don't wanna talk about it. So instead, we decide to say nothing. But what if I told you that you don't need to be afraid of talking about God? In fact, even if you aren't sure about what you think about God, one of the best ways to know him better is to talk about him with other people. Now, if that totally freaks you out, I get it. But what if you thought about it this way? When you talk about God, you don't have to talk about what you know. You can talk about who you know. In fact, that's actually what helped the church get started. The early church was started by a handful of people who were passionate about one specific person. And that person was Jesus. Early believers couldn't necessarily answer every single question about Jesus, but they didn't let that stop them. They were so excited about who they knew, Jesus, that they wanted others to be excited too. So they talked about him a lot, even when they didn't know all the 
details. In the Bible, the book of Acts gives us an amazing picture of what this looked like. Two of Jesus' friends and followers, Peter and John, told everyone about Jesus. And while this was going on, a few religious leaders noticed something. Take a look. When they saw the courage of Peter and John and realized that they were unschooled, ordinary men, they were astonished and they took note that these men had been with Jesus. It was obvious to the religious leaders that Peter and John were uneducated. Peter and John didn't know as many details as other people might have. They probably wouldn't have won a debate about all the facts on Jesus' time here on earth, but they did know who Jesus was. They knew him, they experienced him, and that's what they talked about. That's what left the people who were listening so amazed. The more Peter and John talked about Jesus, the more everyone around them not only realized that Peter and John knew what they were talking about, but also who they were talking about. In other words, they knew God. And because of how Peter and John talked about God, many of the people around them wanted to know God too. Here's what's cool. I think the same can be true for us. We may not know all the answers, but we can know God. We can talk about what we've experienced. We can share what we hope to learn about him as we grow in faith. We can talk about him not just so other people will know him, but so that we'll know him better too. Because talking about God helps us know him better. The more we share our thoughts, our experiences, and even our questions about God with others, the more we'll be challenged to keep talking, keep growing, and keep getting to know God ourselves. We'll make sharing about God and learning more about Him part of our everyday faith, because talking about God helps us know Him better. So how do we make a habit out of talking about God? How can we make talking about Him part of our everyday faith? Well, first we can remember that we don't need to know everything to talk about God. Peter and John weren't the smartest or the most educated people. They were just two guys who knew Jesus. They got to know God in real ways, and they let that be their motivation to talk to others about him. It wasn't so they could have all the right answers or look really impressive. It was so that both they and the people they were talking to could get to know God better. And we can do the same. We can focus on who we're talking about. Instead of worrying about needing to know all of the answers and the details, we can share more about who God is and what his character is like. If we don't know how to talk about how God created the world, maybe instead we can talk about how creative God is to make the world we live in. If we can't explain how God forgives us, we can share how it feels to be forgiven and loved unconditionally by God. While we may not be able to explain why bad stuff happens, we can talk about how God comforts us and supports us when we face hard times. You see, we don't need to know everything to talk about God. We just need to share what we know about Him from having a relationship with Him. Now, I get that for some of us, this isn't easy. If you're not so sure about all this God stuff, talking about how you've known or experienced him may not feel like something you can do, and that's okay. My encouragement to you would be to start talking about what you're not so sure of. If you aren't sure that God made the world, talk to someone about it. If you're not sure that Jesus forgives us, talk to someone about it. If you're not sure that God can comfort you when bad things happen, talk to someone about it. Share the questions you have with your group leader or a trusted friend. Simply start the conversation about God and see what happens. After all, you don't need to know everything to talk about something. One last thing we can learn from Peter and John is that we can talk about God by sharing what he's done in our lives. What I love the most about today's story is that when Peter and John talked about Jesus, people recognized immediately that they'd been with him. These guys may not have been able to answer everyone's questions, but they could talk about what they'd experienced. They could tell their stories. And so can you. When you talk about Jesus, talk about what's happened in your own life. If you've seen him answer a prayer in your life, share that. If you've seen him change your attitude towards a friend or sibling, talk about that. If you've ever seen him do something amazing in your life or the life of someone you know, tell it. Tell your stories. Talk about what you've experienced. Focus on who God is to you. Peter and John kept talking about God, and thousands of people's lives were changed by it. They didn't have all the answers, but they did have their experiences. And the more they talked, the more stories they had to tell. In fact, they eventually both wrote all about it. And these stories have been around for more than 2,000 years. They've helped millions upon millions of people know God better simply by talking about Him. That's pretty cool, right? 
So remember, talking about God won't just help others know him better. Talking about God helps us know him better too. And when we make talking about God a habit, getting to know him better becomes part of our everyday faith. And here's the good news. We've got a place you can start talking about God right here and right now, and that's in your groups. Groups are a place where you can talk about anything. Have questions about God? You can talk about it. Want to know more about Him? Tell your group. Have an experience with God you want to share? Start in your group. These groups are here to help you know God better, and you can do that today by talking about Him with each other.